Sorry I'm late, Ben, but it's kind of early for me. Come on, it's good for you. Let's get started with this pastor you wanted me to meet, huh? Right away, right away. Oh, Bob. Bob, will you come here a minute? Bob? George Reed, this is Pastor Allen, Bob Allen. Very nice to meet you, Mr. Reed. What do you do? George is going to handle the playground business for us. Oh, good. As you can see, we certainly need a playground here. Indeed you do. Appreciate you taking the time out to come down here, sir. Oh, not at all. I'm a pigeon for Ben's little projects. He's always lowering the boom omni <laughs> for the church. We don't need your checkbook this time, old buddy. Just your brains. Heads up! Here we go. Well, should we show him the lot? Lead the way. It used to be an old building here. After they condemned it and tore it down, they gave the lot to the church. Well, what seems to be the problem then? Well, the mission board asked me to look into this, George. There seems to be some sort of a cloud on the title. That's why we need an attorney. I see. Are there documents of any kind? Yes, sir. I've got them in my office. Care to take a look at them? I, I don't have the time right now, but I'd appreciate it if you bring them down to my office later on. Well, I'll be glad to. The sooner we get this thing straightened out, the better. Well, I better get cleaned up. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Thank you, sir, for everything you've done. Not at all, Bob. It's a pleasure. How did you ever get into a mess like this? Well, it isn't easy. I thought you were up to your ears and work with our own church. I am. Since I've been on this mission board, I'm really up to my ears. You're telling me you haven't played golf with me in over a month. I suppose you'll be calling me tomorrow and giving no, me the same no, old story. No, I'm looking forward to the golf game. But if something... Uh, I know something might pop up at the mission board. Oh, brother, are you involved? But now you're trying to get me into this Where's mess. your gripe and I'll buy you a cup of coffee. Come on. Oh, hi, Carol. How about lunch? Well, I was beginning to wonder if I'd ever get to have lunch with my own daughter again. You're the busy bee, Dad, not I. I only had to break one date last week, and you broke two. Well, I'll finish signing these, and we'll get going before that ad agency of yours pushes another panic button. You're the devil. Yes? Who is it? Feels sacrilegious. It isn't the devil. It happens to be a minister of the gospel. Send him in. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I could have waited. Oh, I owe you an apology. Well, I'll explain it to you later. Uh, Carol, this is uh, Pastor Bob Allen, my daughter. Carol. How do you do, Miss Reed? How do you do? Bob has a church over on Hill Street. Uh, these are the papers you wanted, sir. I hope that's all you need. Thank you. Sit down, Bob. Thank you. How long have you been at your church? Almost two years now. I should think that would be a rather difficult neighborhood to work in. Well, it's a real challenge. The church used to have a congregation of nearly a thousand. Now, that's before all the old members moved out to the suburbs. Now we're starting over with a hundred members. A hundred and two to be exact. Tell me, uh, how come you're familiar with the area? Advertising agency, Johnson & Johnson. Our research director just completed a marketing study of that area. See, I'd like to take a look at that. I've, I've waded through a lot of those reports before. My, my dad's got an advertising agency up in San Francisco. Alan? That must be the Allen and White agency. We just lost an account to them. Well, I can't really say I'm sorry. I am. Well, everything seems to be in order. Well, fine. I guess I'd better be running along. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. It's lunchtime, Dad. Oh, yes. Uh, Pastor, why don't you join us for lunch? Maybe give Carol a tip on how to get an account away from Alan and White. Well, fine, thank you. Here you go. Excuse me. Hello? Is this the girl in the gray flannel suit? Hi, Bob. I'm fine, thank you. I could tell you I'm calling about that market study, which I would like to see, but I'm worried about that account my father took away from your agency, and I'd like to make amends. That is, if you don't mind a Chinese restaurant this long on atmosphere and low on price end tomorrow night. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Bob. I can't make it tomorrow night. But I can on Friday. Good. I'll see you then. Bye. Bye-bye. Right. Uh -huh. <laughs> Good. Oh, hi. 
Dog a tree, duck the thing, be they go sick. Arthur's saying that the uh, cook prepared it especially for us. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Jenna mm. Hose. Oh. Mmm, it's marvelous. Oh, my man, huh? Okay. Yeah. My man, Thank you, Arthur. No, thank you. This food is just wonderful, Bob. I've never been here before. Why did you find this place? From Arthur's uncle. He's uh, got a restaurant in Hong Kong. He told me about it, and after I got back, I looked it up. More tea? Oh, no, thank you. When did you do your traveling? Well, at first, with my folks when I was a kid, and after that, on my own, before I decided to study for the ministry. Did you ever think about going in business with your father? Oh, of course. I like the agency business, but, but somehow it, it just wasn't for me. You know, my, my dad's a great guy. When I told him, he, he didn't say a word, just, just held out his hand. And you've never been sorry? Oh, sure, I'm only human. I, I guess we all have our doubts at times. I was a little disappointed when I was called to this church and instead of some foreign mission. But now I've, I'm all wrapped up in what I'm doing. I, I've got the whole world right down there at 18th and Hill. And by what we're doing for the church at large, I, I feel I am in foreign missions. You have a very special kind of church, I guess. In a sense, that's right. But, but now I think I'd feel the same way about any church, just being able to bring the gospel to any group of people and, and through them to bring it to people all over the world. I'm sure you and your parents have often felt the same way. I've never thought of it quite like that. Oh. Yeah. Now, this one's called Lamps of China Delight. And before I tell you what's in it, let me warn you, the next one's called Answer to a Maiden's Prayer. Don't you worry about Carol. She's a pretty savvy young lady. Oh, she might find that Bob interesting and different. But can you imagine her living in that slum area on his salary? <laughs> she spends more than that in a month and doesn't even know where it went. Well, I just hope you're right, but frankly, I'm worried. I just couldn't stand still and see Carol get herself into, well, a way of life that would be all wrong for her. Well, it won't do us any good to worry about it. Carol will do exactly as she wants anyway. I just wish Ben hadn't gotten you involved in that playground. Yeah, it's all settled. We paid the $200 back taxes today and pulled a lot completely out of the mess. You mean, uh, you paid the $200, hmm? Well, it was worth it to get rid of the case to keep Ben's church deals out of my office for a while. Now, don't say anything about the money, will you? Ben or that pastor will only make a big production out of it. Mm -hmm. And so would our own pastor. He's just like Ben, always trying to get you wrapped up in more and more church work. I suppose you're still on the finance committee. I guess so. But I haven't attended any meetings recently. But don't worry about it. They'll call me when they want a check or some more free legal advice. You can depend on that. Say, why don't we get down at the driving range and hit a few? Maybe I can get even with Ben on the golf course tomorrow. All right. You through with your coffee? Yes, I'll pick up here. I'll take you to the kitchen, meet you at the car.
some of these are really good. Yeah, we've got a wonderful group of kids here. Oh, excuse me a minute, Carol. Of course. Pastor, it is my neighbor, Mrs. Lee. Ambulance has come to take her to the hospital. Her little girl will be alone. I, I would like to take her, you know. But we have large family and... I understand, Mrs. Valdez. I I'll look into it right away. Thank you, Pastor. Oh, Nancy's out in the hall waiting. I brought her with me. Well, would you mind bringing her in? No, not at all. Thank you. Nancy. Oh, Carol. I've got a problem. One of the women's been taken to the hospital. I've got to find a place for a little girl to stay. Will you excuse me a minute? Yes. Hi, Nancy. I'm going over to see your mother now, so I don't want you to worry about a thing. Do you mind staying here a few minutes? Uh, say, Carol. Carol, I'd like you to meet Nancy. Hello, Nancy. Carol, do you mind? How old are you? Nine. What grade are you in? Four. Do you have any brothers or sisters? No. Oh. Don't be unhappy, honey. Your mama's gonna be fine. There you are. Thank you. You know, I think that pro at the club's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Didn't you think my swing was better tonight? Much better. Hi, Mom and Dad. Oh, hi, Carol. Hello, dear. Nancy? Mother and Dad, this is Nancy Lee. Bob just dropped us off, and her mother's in the hospital, so she's going to spend the night with us. Good evening, Nancy. Nice to have you here with us. Thank you, Mr. Reed. Hello, Nancy. Nancy, I bet you'd like a piece of chocolate cake, wouldn't you? Come on. Now, do you see what I'm worried about? I don't think there's anything to worry about. Oh, beautiful. I'll put them right down. Oh, that's just wonderful, Pastor Bob. And thank you for letting me know. I will. Goodbye. Good news, Nancy? Uh-huh. Pastor Bob said Mommy was operated on this morning. And she's resting now. Well, that's just fine. We'll drive you down to the hospital just as soon as we get the word. Should we have a look at the fire? Let's go. Come on. Now, what do you think? Oh, it's just fine. Should we put the steaks on? All right. Let's see. This one is yours. And ladies first. So you put that one on right in the middle so the fire gets it. Now, gentlemen, always come second. You notice that's the bigger one, isn't it? So that one's mine. Now, don't you keep your eye on that one. This one's yours. That's mine. I think oh. I'll take both of them. Hi, dear. Oh, hi, sweetheart. Hi, Nancy. Hi. Don't they look great? Oh, I'm just famished. Yeah, it won't be long now. I'll get a little mm. practicing done. Here. Nancy, you keep an eye on my steak, okay? Nancy, I have something to tell you. Pastor Bob told me that he found a wonderful family who'd like you to stay with them until your mommy gets out of the hospital. You would like to be down there with your friends, wouldn't you, honey? Nancy, honey, what's the matter? Oh, honey, don't cry. Glad those tears aren't falling on the fire. You know, they put it out. We wouldn't have any steak tonight. I put it out. Say, Nancy, you see that fish hanging on the wall inside? Would you like to hear how I caught it? Come on, I'm going to tell you all about it. Now, I was on a vacation last summer, you see? And that's when I caught it. I put the bait in the water and just like that. He peeled off pretty near all of my line. Isn't he a beauty? 
Nasty, you should have seen him. All of a sudden, he took off just like a jet, leaping and twisting and turning in the air. He was trying to break my line. Well, all of a sudden, he turned around and he made a beeline right for the boat. Well, I knew if he ever hit the boat with that long sword, he, why, he'd put a hole in the boat and he'd sink me. Well, I didn't want that to happen. Well, I, just in the nick of time, I got the boat right out of his way. And after two hours of battling, I finally got him all tired and I got him on the boat and I thought the whole thing was over. And I don't know where he goes. He makes a big leap. And he pretty near cut Mrs. Reed's leg off with that, with that terrible sword. Well, you can see who won the battle. I finally got him on the boat, brought him home, there he is over my mantelpiece. You are a very brave man, Mr. Reed. Oh, Nancy. Nancy, I've got an idea. Why don't you stay here with us? Oh, yes. Nancy, I, I want you to go outside and keep your eye on my steak, huh? Okay, good girl. Don't you think that's something we should have talked over first? Please, Helen, not now. Let's go eat, huh? Good. Want to help me with the steaks? Well, how do they look? Well, they're almost done. Do you want to you wanna turn them down? Yeah, I'll turn them. Okay. Carol, would you bring the plates, please, dear? Well, we can start now. It'll take a couple more minutes. We can start now with the salad. All right. Well, let's get going, Nancy. Let's get you sit real close. I'll sit up here. Why don't you say grace, Dad? Dear Lord, Bless this food to our use and in us to thy service. Amen. George, I simply can't understand you're taking it upon yourself to make a decision like that without, without discussing it first. Well, it happened so fast, what else could I say? But you didn't have to say anything. There was another family all ready to take her. Her own kind of family, I'm sure. I hope your words don't mean what they imply. Oh, uh, do, now, don't misunderstand me, George. I like Nancy very much. I, well, I'm thinking of her. She doesn't fit into this kind of neighborhood or our kind of friends. Helen, we're not adopting the child. She's simply staying here for a week or so until her mother gets better. And if our friends and neighbors don't like it, I'd be happy to tell them what to do about it. Oh, no, I'm sorry, George. I, I suppose that didn't sound very enlightened, but... Well, you know what I'm really worried about, don't you? Yes, I do. Having Nancy here is going to, well, throw Carol and that young pastor together even more often. Now, I know you don't want that any more than I do. I suppose not. But Carol isn't asking us for advice. But that's no reason for us to make it worse than it is. George. George, couldn't you have an unexpected um, business trip in a few days? But you're always going off to New York or Washington anyway. Only uh, this time, take me with you. And it'll be perfectly logical and natural to send Nancy to that other home they found for her. I'll think about it. some flowers. Thank you. I'm sorry I feel so sleepy. We'll bring Nancy back tomorrow night, Mrs. Lee. And don't worry about Nancy. She's welcome to stay with us until you get better. You're a wonderful Christian. God bless you. 
Let's go find a vase to put those flowers in, Nancy. Bye, Mommy. Don't you look pretty. Oh, thank you. Darling, Carol and Nancy will be downstairs in just a moment. Now, don't you think this would be a good time to tell them about um, our trip? There won't be any trip just now. Oh, George, why... I hope you're not more concerned about Nancy than you are about your own daughter. Well, Nancy, did you finish your homework? Uh-huh. Miss Carol's real good in fraction. Oh, that's wonderful. Carol, why don't we do that's nice for Nancy? Well, I don't know. Let me see. I think there's a real good show on tonight in color. A western. A western in color? Well, I'll get it. Well, let's go see it together. Now, remember, I sell the popcorn, okay? Now, I'll get you comfortable right here. Hello, Mrs. Reed. Oh, good evening, Pastor Bob. Hi, Bob. Mr. Reed. Hi, Nancy. Pastor Bob. Hi, Bob. Hello, Carol. Is Mommy okay? Oh, yes, she, she's resting quite comfortably. See, you know what? I've just discovered that there's no school tomorrow. Would you like to join some of your friends at the church and help make foreign mission posters? Oh, yeah. And maybe later we can pick Carol up and we can all go to the park. How's that sound, Nancy? Oh, that's just wonderful. Carol? Four o'clock, all right? Fine. Mr. Reed. I'm going to be tied up at church quite a while. I'm wondering if you could drop Nancy off on your way to work. Maybe you can come to the park with us, Mr. Reed. Oh, I'll be too busy, Nancy, but I'll be happy to drop you off at the church. Come on, the Weston's beginning. Get a seat. Hurry up. They show a lot of imagination. Yes, I'm very proud of him. How's this, Pastor? You now, that's very nice. Yes, it is. Well, of course, Mercedes, the same as they have here. And can Lucy talk Japanese? Lucy? Oh, uh, uh, Lucy who? The one in I Love Lucy. Can she, Pastor? Well, I think they have ways of making Lucy understood in Japan. Now, but uh, what brought this on? That's very nice, Mercedes. Yes, indeed. Now, I want you girls to finish these up and we'll put them on the board. Okay. Lucy's not the only one speaking Japanese these days. Uh, the church is thinking about a television program for Japan in, in their own language. And you already know what we've done in radio. See, if you've got another moment, I'd like to show you something. Fine. You mean you take dollars from the people in your church and give them to foreign missions? Yes, we certainly try to do our part. I hope you'll forgive me, Bob. But it doesn't make much sense. I assume you're partially subsidized by the church body, yet you give dollars to missions. Well, it's just extra bookkeeping, shifting dollars from one pocket and putting it in the other. Well, it's much more than that, Mr. Reed. My people can't afford it as much as your congregation can, but if they want and they need the same sense of participating in the worldwide program of the church. You see, my people work with, with their hands for a living. Their, their personal lives are are lived in very small geographical locations. Yet by, by joining other members of the church throughout the world, they, they, they are pioneering for Christ on many faraway frontiers. It seems to me they have a few frontiers closer to home, such as training themselves for better jobs so that they can support their families decently. Well, some are trying to do exactly that, but you see others will always be doing the same job that they're doing now but they can all enrich their lives by reaching out through our church to, to bring the gospel to people who have never heard of it before. That's all very fine, but I still can't say I'm sold. Well, if everybody shrugged off our mission, we wouldn't be in so many countries of the world as we are now. When one of our, when one of our men, a Puerto Rican bricklayer, learned how much we had to do to ju just keep up with the world population growth, he, he came to me and he said, Pastor, looks like we're gonna have to run where we always walked before. Okay, Bob, I give up. When do I take off for Africa? Well, believe it or not, Mr. Reed, by, by your contributing to the church's foreign mission program, you are already there.
上诗，一再动，一再细，何处生边一枝花，何处生边一枝花。That's a lovely song, Nancy. What does it mean? It is the song of two people who love each other very much. And they are lonely, like the mountain flower, when they are not together. Oh, I didn't realize it was so late. I've got a call to make down by the church in about an hour. How about dropping Nancy off on the way and you coming with me? All right, Bob. Shall we go? Nancy painted that one pretty good, huh? She shows a lot of talent. As a matter of fact, I'm amazed at what these children can do. Yeah, especially when you figure the few breaks these kids have had in life. I suppose very few of them will ever get what we call the breaks. Well, perhaps not in the usual way, but you know, Carol, I like to think that some of the kids who are painting these posters will someday become some of our future pastors and teachers. I certainly hope so anyway, because we're sure going to need them. I mean, the way the world population keeps jumping in leaps and bounds, there, there just aren't enough pastors to go around. We can't keep up with it. Well, you're doing a wonderful job here, Bob. Cheryl, these people have been running into such hatred and prejudice. I mean, I've seen some of them treated so shabbily. They have many of them. Closed door to buck before they can even think of the breaks in life. That's why I believe I belong here. I mean, you have no idea what this church means to them, the opportunities it gives to them. When you talk about our new frontiers in space, we've got our own frontiers right here. There I go again. I'm sorry, Carol. I guess you know how I am when I get on this subject. Shall we go? All right. Oh, say, Carol, how about dinner tomorrow night at that little restaurant? Oh, thank you, but I won't be able to. I'm sorry. Well, maybe another night. And that, my friends, is why none of us can live on his own little island, unconcerned about the problems of his fellow man, uninvolved in the lives of those around us. The fact is, God has involved us. He has put us where we are, right in the midst of the stream of life, so that through us, he might reach into the lives of others. Now you may ask, how has God involved me? How has he made me responsible for the family across the street or the people I don't even know? He did that when he sent his son into the world to live for you, to die for you, to redeem you, to make you his very own. The scriptures tell us he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Today, you and I are Christ's men, Christ's women, bought by Christ, his property, body, mind, and soul, talents, time, and treasure, his, his completely. And because we are his, he has given us a job to do, his job. I am come, he says, that they, that is all men, might have life and have it more abundantly. Now that was his job. Now it's ours to spread the life, to share the life, which is ours by faith in him. A life of peace, of power, of victory, and ultimately, the life that is eternal. Now let's be honest. Do we really go out into the world each morning fully convinced of the fact that we are indeed Christ's men, purchased to be his own, purchased to do his work, to carry out his will? To do less would be to deny the Lord who bought us. No, let us never forget the fact that this is Christ's world, that we are Christ's men, that it is our all-consuming purpose in life to bring him and the blessings of his gospel to every man, woman, and child in the world today, whether he lives across the street, across the city, across the ocean, or across the world.
Wonderful, Pastor. Wonderful. Oh. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, Pastor. George, how are you? Nats, it was nice to have you with us today. I hope you'll come again. Thank you, Pastor. I hope so, too. <laughs> Nancy might like to come to our Sunday school next week. Oh, uh, well, that's very kind of you, Pastor, but, uh, well, we hope Nancy's mother will be better by next Sunday. Carol, if you should happen to see Bob Allen in the next day or two, would you please ask him to call me? Yes, I will, if I see him. She's a real little doll. Happy to see her in church on Sunday. Did she enjoy the service? I suppose so. I don't think the pastor's ever done a better job of laying it on the line. Just what our opportunities really are and our responsibilities. I was there, Ben. I heard it. Don't you agree? I don't know. Pretty much the same groundwork, low pitch. What do you mean? Well, you know, keep sending in the cash so we can spread it around. Outside of our own congregation, of course. I hope you got more than that out of it. That was the meat of it, wasn't it? That wasn't one tiny piece of gristle. George, you're not trying to needle me, are you? Ben, why should I? Okay, okay. Look, since you weren't at the committee meeting last week, let me bring you up to date. We talked about the same thing, yeah. on a little different level. Like how? Like how much our church needs this mission forward movement that the pastor's been talking about. Oh, that. Well, I will say this, they are more forward. Uh, the way they're reaching into our pockets, that is. It's not our pockets they're trying to reach, George. It's our hearts. And it's not they, it's us. We're all in this thing together. Then where would they be without our money? That was supposed to be my question, remember? But since you asked, I'll try and answer it. You see, George, without our money, yours and mine, we wouldn't have buildings or books or equipment for all of the youngsters that go to our Sunday schools. We wouldn't have new churches springing up all over the land, colleges, seminaries, pastors for our pulpits, missionaries to send to foreign countries, schools, churches, and hospitals all over the world, the gospel on the printed page, on radio, on television, food and clothing for the starving millions. Oh, sure, we're doing all of these things now in a limited way. But George, what we need to do is to do the more and better Oh, I feel a bite coming on. George, you're so far off the beam in this whole matter that I don't think anything the pastor has said has gotten to you. What he's trying to get over is that what would happen if all of our members, like you and me, really woke up? Well, that's simple. We'd have missionaries on Mars and we'd all be broke. <laughs> Just writing you a note since I couldn't catch you for a late lunch. I had an early lunch with Ben. I sure wish you'd have called. All Ben did was give me a rehash on last Sunday's sermon. I guess it was one of the pastor's better sermons. I suppose so. But boy, do I get a kick out of giving Ben the square needle. <laughs> do you have to run off or uh, do we have time to chat? I don't have an appointment until 2.30. I don't know why you and I always play games with each other. You always know when there's something troubling me, and I always know you know. What's wrong, Pumpkin? Heart troubles again. No, Dad, it's not quite so simple as that. It's just that, well, I began to ask some questions about myself that I should have asked a long time ago. How about specifying a specific or two, as old Judge Cromwell used to say? I was just thinking about what Mrs. Lee said. We're not wonderful Christians, Dad. Church means very little to us as compared to what it means to Nancy and Mrs. Lee. And Bob Allen. And Bob, too. Carol, are you looking for the same answers they have? 
I don't know whether they could be quite the same. I guess I'm like you. I have to dig out the answers for myself, no matter what they may be. And Bob is letting you dig up your own answers. I think I've already answered that. I know how Bob... At least I think I know how he's beginning to feel about me, and... I don't want either one of us to get hurt. I'm too practical. Maybe too selfish. Thank you. I'll turn off the TV. I'm sorry to have missed your post, Carol. And it's nice to see you. Thank you. There was a PTA meeting at Nancy's school, and Mother had a committee meeting at the club, so Dad took Nancy. <laughs> Can't quite imagine your father at PTA. Oh, I can. He used to take me to most of mine. Oh. Uh, by the way, Carol, have you seen that young pastor friend of mine lately, Bob Allen? Not for a week or so. May I get you some coffee, Pastor? Oh, no. No, thanks. You know, Bob's done quite a job with that congregation of his. Perhaps one of the most important jobs facing our church today. Well, he's certainly enthusiastic about it. Yes, I know, and it's wonderful. Bob Allen's a hard-working young man. He wants to share his faith with everyone he meets. Wouldn't it be rather difficult for, for someone else, I mean someone in his own church, to be his, to share the faith that Bob has? Anything worth the effort is difficult. But I'm sure there are members of Bob's church, just as there are members of our own church, who just don't want to make the effort. Isn't it possible that Bob is too wrapped up in his work for his own good? I think you were in church when I preached on Christian involvement. If you want an explanation of Pastor Bob, well, you'll find it right there. He's a committed young man, involved, if I may say, up to his ears in the work he's been called for. I suppose as a pastor, he almost has to be. Sometimes. Sometimes we make a mistake, Carol, in assuming that there's a great difference between ministers and people. We've all been called as ministers to a life of commitment and involvement. Well, now, it's true. We all have to make a living. But each of us also has to make a life. And that's where commitment comes in. Commitment to Christ and to the spiritual goals he's set before us. I wonder where Carol could have gone. I thought she was staying at home tonight. Hi, Mom. Oh, Dad. Hi, dear. Anything new happen in PTA meetings in the last 10 years, Dad? I haven't noticed this yet. Pastor Thompson dropped by to see you. Something about finance committees. Well, that figures. Do you have anything else to say? We had a nice little talk. And then I went for a walk. I may go to New York. Our creative director there wants me to come back and help out with a fall fashions campaign for a few weeks. Oh, darling, that sounds exciting. Oh, New York can be such fun this time of year. There's a permanent spot open in New York, and I've asked for it. Not running away, are you, punk? I don't know, Dad. Doesn't matter. Way to spend Saturday morning. There, the five day work week around here. We're just trying to catch up on a new account. Yeah, what you might call an account, and I'd like to discuss it with you. I'm sorry, Bob. I just don't think there's anything to discuss. On the contrary, Carol, we have some talking to do. Let's be honest with each other. You've been running away, but, but I don't know why. I just don't want either one of us to make a mistake. Well, I know I'm not making a mistake. It would be a mistake, Bob. I don't belong in your kind of life. I could never feel the same way you feel about your work, your church. Never is the most illogical word used in the English language. Bob, don't play word games with me. You know what I mean. I do, but, but do you? 
Carol, there's no reason why any two people have to think alike. I mean, we all have our own backgrounds and our own personalities. As, as long as we share the same faith, uh, I mean, the same faith in Christ, uh, there's no reason why we can't make it work. That's just the point. Do we share the same faith? Oh, I know we belong to the same church, but my family's never been that wrapped up in it. And I don't think I could be either. Why, oh, I, I am interested in the church, but not the way you are. Possibly you could become just as interested in, in your own way. There's so many things I'm not sure about. Some of the things I accepted as a child or even in college just don't seem relevant anymore. Carol, I went through the same searching, and when I was in prep school, there were times when, when I didn't think there were any answers. Then a professor took me under his wing. We used to meet in his library once a week and, and discuss some of, the, some of the greatest minds in history, both inside and outside of the church. One thing I'll always be very grateful to him for, he taught me to be intellectually honest, and at the same time, to, to hold Christ in the center of my life. You know, you can do both. I don't see why you're doing the work you're doing now. You should be at a university or writing, instead of working with very fine, but very unfortunate people like Nancy and Mrs. Lee. Carol, I get more from them than I give. Every day I realize more clearly that, that the Lord is using me for some very special purpose, to bring his love into the life of Mrs. Lee and into the lives of many people like her. Now, can there be anything more rewarding than that? I wish that I could believe that much in something. Carol, can I help you find what you're looking for? No. Can't prove anything. If I became more involved in the church because of you, I would never know what I really believe. It wouldn't be fair or honest to either one of us. Decisions aren't easy to make, are they, Pumpkin? Are you sure you're ready to make a decision as yet? There's no other decision to make. I'm not blaming you and Mom. But how could I ever be Bob's wife? you were sleeping. I knew you weren't. I'm sorry, I was just thinking. George, don't you remember what you always said about Carol? What was that? Well, you kept telling me not to worry, because Carol was going to make up her own mind anyway. Well, you ought to be satisfied now. Yes, I am. Oh, I just couldn't see her in that kind of life. There'd be too much she'd be missing. George. Huh? Don't you feel the same way? I don't like her reasons for the decision. She seems to think something is lacking in herself and in us. She's all upset now. She'll feel differently about everything in a few days. I hope so. Comfort my heart with the assurance that in sickness and trouble, I am still your dear child. Give me Christian steadfastness that I may willingly carry my burden and wait for your help. You are my God, 
Let this be my comfort in life and in death. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor. I'll stop by again and see you tomorrow, Mrs. Lee. Thank you. Hi, Nancy. Mommy. May I speak to you for a moment, sir? Sure. told me how close she is to you, so I, I guess you know something about, about our situation. Well, I couldn't prepare a brief on it, but I think I have the general idea. You know, one thing puzzles me, sir. Carol's implied that religion isn't very important in her home, yet, yet every time I've met you, it's because you've been involved in some act of Christian service. Bob, we're churchgoers in our own way. We just don't believe in going overboard. And if you're talking about that vacant lot alongside your church, well, the reason I handled the legal on that was because Ben lowered the boom on me. I was thinking about a little Chinese girl. The way you look at her, I know you've done more than just take her into your home. Nancy's a very sweet little girl. We're all very fond of her. Put it your own way, sir. We're both saying the same thing. Nancy Lee is giving you something, and, and you're giving her something. You know, Nancy's parents came from Hong Kong, where they became Christians through our church's foreign mission efforts. Efforts that you helped make possible. Now she's bringing something back to you. Bob, I don't think you brought me out here to talk about Nancy. No, I'm, I'm really talking about you and Carol. You know, Carol's looking for some answers, and she may need more help than she thinks she does. Bob, some kinds of help are pretty hard to give. Cold grape juice, Ben. Don't pick uh, us up. Great. Just what I need. Mmm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Well, it just wasn't your day, George. You know, I don't believe I've ever seen anybody putt with a slice before. <laughs> Serves me right. I shouldn't try to concentrate on two things. Mm -hmm. What's up? Problems? Yeah, Carol. She seems to think she can solve things by running away to New York. Oh? Ben, if Carol were your daughter, what would you do to help her? Well, I think I'd start by taking a good look at myself. Oh, Ben, don't give me that same old pitch. If you're waiting for me to change my spots, we'll never help Carol. George, you remember what the pastor said a couple of Sundays ago? About the Lord putting us where we are? So that he could do his work through us? But you think that uh, perhaps right now he's trying to get to Carol through you? If he is, he sure chosen a lousy way. I'm inclined to agree with you. I know people who could do a much better job. But after all, you're her father, and she needs your help. OK. But you still haven't told me how you'd help her. George, can I level with you? Oh, Ben, haven't you always? Yes, I suppose so. You know, I've often suspected that whatever you heard in church went in one ear and out the other. If it did stop in your head, it uh, never really found its way to your heart. That's not even good physiology. It's not supposed to be. Look, George, why can't you get with it? You know, I have a hunch that both you and Carol need the same thing, to know that what Pastor Thompson gives us every week are not just empty words. They're things we live by, things that give our lives meaning. How long has it been since you and Carol have attended the Lord's Supper? Sometime, I guess. Right there might be part of your problem. Part of my pro Ben, what do you mean? George? How long do you think this flower will bloom now? Not long, Ben. You know that. That's right. It's much like we are. Once we lose contact, real contact, with God's word and a sacrament. Trim it to the bone, Ben. Just what is it that makes us so different? Well, 
Perhaps it's because I believe with all my heart that Christ has redeemed me. He's redeemed me for a purpose. It's his purpose that I'm trying to achieve in my life in all the things I do. Just as I'm sure it's his purpose that you and Carol would like to serve. Ben, how did we get on this subject anyway? Well, you said you wanted to help Carol. And you didn't know where to begin. Yeah. I suggested that you might start by taking a good look at yourself. I went to New York on business before Carol did. Helen wanted to go with me, but this time I wanted to be alone. To do what Ben suggested. To take a good long look at myself. I didn't realize what kind of a look this was going to be. It had been a long time since I had read anything in the Bible. But somehow I got started. And its passages had meanings I had never found in them before. During the evenings that followed, I found myself making excuses so that I could be alone. To read, to think, and to take a good look at a guy named George Reed. Not far from my hotel room were the neon lights, the clamor, the grinding pace, the flashing headlines of a world going mad with power. Yet men of good will were trying to move this tortured world back from the brink of disaster. Was there really any hope mankind could survive? I began to realize that all men are members of the human family, that God is their father and I their brother. What could I do to help build a world in which a man would not judge his brother by the color of his skin? The skyscrapers of New York, probing into the sky like missiles, they seemed to be reaching toward God. Were they rather symbols of a way of life which was taking men further away from God? I remembered a passage that had leaped out at me from the New Testament. The one where Christ said that the church was his and that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. What church, I asked? Could it be, I asked myself, could it be that I am the church on whom Christ is depending? Back at work with all the pressures, it was hard to relive my experiences in New York or to see things as clearly. Yes? Put them on. Hi, Bob. Uh, Mr. Reed, uh, Mrs. Lee asked me to call you. She'd like to talk to you and, and would appreciate it very much if you could stop by to see her at the hospital as soon as convenient. Well, can't you tell me what it's all about? Well, sure. I'll make it this afternoon. Goodbye, Bob. <laughs> I didn't 
wake you. I'm glad you come, Mr. Reed. How are you? Are you feeling better today? I would not be well again, Mr. Reed. That's why I asked to talk to you. I'm not so... I know. I talked with the doctor this morning. It's all right. What can I do to help? I would like you to tell Nancy and explain to her. Nancy love you. I'd be glad to, but I... I think the pastor should tell her. Oh, no, Mr. Reed. From you, it would have mean more. Nancy, tell me, you wonderful Christian gentleman. She liked pastor very much. She loved you like father. I'm sorry, Mrs. Lee. I, I think the pastor should tell her. Please, Miss Reed. Please explain to her. And tell her I must die. And she, she must not be angry to God. I'll talk to her. And don't worry about it, Nancy. Nancy will always have a home. Pastor Ellen. Oh, yes, Mr. Reed. Fifteen minutes? Yes, sir. I'll be out in front. All right, bye. Mr. Reed, your phone call sounded urgent. Anything wrong? Yes. I've been up to see Mrs. Lee. I suppose you know why. Yes, I do. Is that your idea? No, it was hers. There really isn't a chance for her then, huh? The doctors say no. All right, what am I supposed to tell Nancy? If I can't see any rhyme or reason for a thing like this, what do I tell her? I'm leaving that to you. The fact that we can't see God's purpose doesn't mean he doesn't have one. That's not good enough, Bob. I'm still leaving it to you. Mr. Reed, let's go inside and talk a bit, okay? I don't know why, Mr. Reed, any more than you do. No one knows why death comes to each of us in the way it does, or, or why one life ends at 20 and, a, and another at 80. But I do know that death, whenever it comes, holds no terror for the person who's put his faith in Christ. Christ has given us all the assurance of a life that is everlasting based on the, on the fact of his own resurrection. Remember his words, because I live, you will live also. I live eternally, that is. When we believe that, Mr. Reed, we can accept the mysteries of birth and death, even if we can't explain them. Yes. But what would words like that mean to a, a poor immigrant woman like Mrs. Lee, facing death and not even 40? I know what those words mean to Mrs. Lee. You see, we, we've talked together for, for many hours, and, and her faith is a wonderful inspiration to me. As for what they mean to you, Mr. Reed, I think you'll agree that the true measure of life is not the number of years we spend on Earth, but only the way in which we live those years, the way we share the love which, which Christ has shared with us. You see, in that sense, Mrs. Lee may have lived a, a very long time. I wonder if she'd agree with you, or if any of us really do when the time comes. I've noticed that some of the most religious men frequently fight the hardest, just so they can live a little longer. Yes, I know. But, but none of us can, can know when, when our work here is really done, when, when God is testing us or, or when he's calling us to come home to him. But when he does call us, we, we know where we're going because Jesus told us. Well, I'm sure you know his words. Uh, Let not your heart be troubled. In my Father's house are, are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you, and, and I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And then there's the, the marvelous statement of Paul. I'm sure you've heard it a thousand times. O oh, death, where is thy sting? 
O grave, where is thy victory? Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now suppose you translate that into the words of a nine-year-old child. Mrs. Lee wants Nancy to hear it through your words, not mine. Bob, I've used words my whole life. But I can't find the kind of words I need right now. You and I have always been on the same wavelength. The New York office phoned today, and they want me to come to New York for good. Is that what you want? It's the best way. When would you leave? Saturday. Doesn't give me very much time. What do you mean? Enough time to make up for the past 24 years. Well. <laughs> Don't talk, Pumpkin, just yet. I don't know if I can put it into words anyway. And if you do interrupt, I'm afraid you'll have a tongue-tied lawyer on your hand. And that would be kind of embarrassing for a man who's supposed to wake up from a sound sleep and give a detailed explanation on everything his client's ever done. Carol, you were there before me. You knew that something was missing in your life, in our lives. You wanted to find it. I've always been pretty much satisfied with the way things were going, that is, up until the past few weeks. I didn't know anything was missing until I needed it. First, I wanted it for you. Now I want it for Nancy. And for your mother, too, I guess. I think I know what's missing, and I think I know where to find it. It's the same thing that Ben and Bob have had right along. I don't think I follow you, Dad. I don't blame you. The way I'm putting it, I guess it'd be hard for anybody to follow me. Pumpkin, during the past few days, I, I've been forced to take a good look at myself, to take a good look at us. And frankly, I don't like what I've seen. Oh, we've gone to church, made all the motions, repeated all the pious phrases. But somewhere along the line, we've allowed ourselves to be insulated against everything that a Christian faith could give us. Have you been talking to Bob? <laughs> somewhere along the line, we've allowed ourselves to become too sophisticated, too superficial, and too preoccupied with the things that, well, the material things to let our lives be influenced by the things we said we believed. We said we believe, but did we believe? And if we did believe, when, how, and where did we show it? Ever since I met Bob, I've been asking myself the same questions. What's wrong with us, Dad? A lot of things, I'm afraid. Right now, I'm working on a project which is opening my eyes once again to the things in life that count. The things I'm in danger of losing. This project, I hope, will prove to be the turning point in our lives. Would you like to read it? They aren't all my words. Some are Bob's and some are Ben's. And some are from a book that I'm afraid we've sadly neglected. Nancy's mother is dying. We've got to explain it to her. I've done as much as I can. You are the one that's going to have to tell her. Me? Yes. You are the writer in the family.
looking for anybody in particular, Carol? No. I'm just doing some research. Oh, a new account? No, this is something else I have to write. Well, how's it going? Not very well. Is there anything I can do to help? No, thank you. This is something I have to write myself. Well, after you're finished with this, there's, there's something I'd like to talk to you about. I'm leaving for New York Saturday, tomorrow. Well, will you be gone very long? I don't know. There's just so many things I have to think about and try to understand. All right, Carol, I, I hope everything works out for you. Just remember, I'll be here. Bye, Bob. Bye, Carol. I'm not sure what's going on here, but I think I'm entitled to know. Carol was... Well, she was like a different person when she left for the airport. Carol is a different person. Is Nancy up as yet? George, please, let's talk about our daughter just for a minute. I am. Carol wrote this letter to Nancy, but it's really to all of us. Why on earth would Carol write to Nancy when she... Judge, I don't understand. Would you have her come in for a moment? George, please, I... Please. Right, she's just finishing breakfast. Good morning, Nancy. Hi, Mr. Reed. I've got a letter for you this morning. A real wonderful letter. From who, Mommy? Carol wrote it, but it's from all of us. And mostly it's from God. Want me to read it to you? I can read it. All righty. There you are. Dear Nancy, this is from Carol. I never had a sister but now I feel that you and I are sisters. When I was about 12 years old, my mother was very sick. I thought she was going to die. One night, grandmother came into my room to hear my prayers, but I wouldn't pray. I told her, I hate God for letting my mother be so sick. If she dies, I will always hate God. I know you would never feel that way, Nancy, because you are so much closer to God than I have ever been. 
Now the doctors say your mother is not going to get well. But of course, that depends on God's plan for your mother. We don't know the reason for God's plans, but there is a reason behind them all. Of one thing we can be sure, we know God loves us very dearly. God let my mother live because her work on earth was not finished. If God calls your mother home, it is because her work on earth is done and maybe because he wants her much more in heaven. Your mother knows this. She knows that Jesus died for us so that we could live forever with God. You can help your mother by showing her that you share this wonderful faith in Jesus. You can help us too, Nancy. There must be a reason why God brought you into our home and into our hearts. Our church sent the word of God to your people. Now you are bringing it back to us. We love you, Carol. Thank <laughs> you.